Hey everyone, this is Bradley Bush with another math video for you. Today, our topic is inverse functions. And specifically, we're going to discuss um, what an inverse function is, kind of like the big picture, uh, some notation behind inverse function because it has a very specific notation. We'll talk about the mathematical definition of an inverse, which is often used to show that two functions are inverses. And then we'll actually give you an example where we show two functions are inverses using the definition of an inverse. Let's start. So what exactly is an inverse function? Well, the big picture is that if you have some function, say f, that function will do something to an input. It's kind of like a machine, right? You plug in something into the machine and the machine does something in a sequential step-like fashion and then spits out a result. So the first thing this machine or this function does to the input is that it multiplies the input by three. So the first thing, whatever you plug in, it's going to be multiplied by three. After that, the second thing that happens is whatever the result is, you multiply, you add two. After you multiply by three, you add two. So there are two things that happen to this input. The first thing is it's multiplied by three. The second thing is you add two to it. So an inverse, if this function f has an inverse, that inverse will undo what has been done. It's kind of like those um, epic fail compilations you see on YouTube where you have this person jumping slow-mo on a diving board and then they, they're they running on the diving board and they jump off and it's slow-mo and they start to turn horizontal and your head, you're like, no, no, they're going to belly flop. And then pssst, like you, it stops right when they splat. And then all of a sudden you see the reverse and it goes back and all of a sudden they're back on the diving board. That's kind of what an inverse function does. It undoes what the original function did, but in the reverse order. So it undoes what has been done by the function in reverse order. So the last thing it, that the function did is the first thing the inverse will undo and so on. So what was the last thing that happened with the function? We added two. Well, what is the opposite of adding two? Well, that would be subtracting two. So the first thing that's done to the input of and the inverse function is we're going to subtract two here. So this is actually kind of cool, right? We're subtracting two from the input. The last thing that was done on the function is the first thing that's undone. And then we step back. What was the second to last thing that was done in the function? Well, we don't have a lot of things in our function that were done. So the second to last thing or the first thing was multiplying by three. What's the opposite of multiplying by three? Well, that's dividing by three. So we divide by three. That's what happens here. So G is the inverse of F. We can see because it undoes what F does or has done to an input and it does it in the reverse order. So summary, an inverse, in this case G, undoes what F has done in the reverse order. That's the big picture of what happens um, in the relationship between a function and its inverse. There's some specific notation that's used in inverses, and it's this funny little negative one right there. So in algebra, we're used to having that negative one be an exponent. And in, in algebra land, we see this. We see, say if we have two to the negative one, that really means one over two because it means the, the negative means that You've got to take the reciprocal of the base, which is right here. So that means you flip it. But that is in the context of 
algebraic manipulation. But when we're dealing with functions, this is not what happens. This is simply an identifier, a label that means the inverse of f. So we still have our same function name. This is a function that's named f. But if you ever see a negative 1 up top, it is not an exponent. It's a label that means the inverse of f. Let's talk about now the mathematical definition of an inverse of a function. So if f and g are functions, then we know that f and g are inverses if two things happen and are true. The first thing is you have to perform the function composition f of g, and it has to come out as x, meaning you plug g into f, do the algebra, and what pops out is x, not x squared, not 3x, not 5x, just x. And this is super important, and both of these things have to be true. When you do the function composition g of f, out pops just x again. So when you do both function compositions, f of g and g of f, you get x as your answer. If that is true, then you know f and g are inverses. So let's do a little example where we show whether or not two functions are inverses. So you may recognize these functions, f and g, but we're going to verify that these are indeed inverses of each other using the, the definition of inverse functions. So again, the definition says that we need to perform both f of g and g of x, sorry, f of g and g of f, and the result has to be x. So this is what we're hoping for, right? So let's, let's, let's try it. So this means we take f and we plug g in as the input. So f, our function f, is 3 times something plus 2. And that something is going to be g, right? That's what we're plugging in as the input. Well, instead of having g, let's actually plug in what g is. So we have 3 times something plus 2. And that something is no longer going to be just g. We're actually going to put in x minus 2 divided by 3. So now what? Now what do we have? Well, we can see the threes cancel, and we're left with x minus 2 plus 2. We see that the twos cancel, and what are we left with? This is what we want. We're left with just x. That's what we wanted. We performed the function composition f of g, and we got back just x. Perfect. First one done. Now the second one, g of f, that also must be equal to x. So g, again, is x minus 2 over 3. So let's actually write that down. I'm going to move g of f down here to give me a little more space. So we have x minus 2, so something minus 2 divided by 3. And that something, the x, the input, is, we say, going to be f, right? Well, now we just have to, instead of having the f there, let's actually plug in what it is. So instead of having f here, Let's erase f, and let's plug in 3x plus 2. Perfect. Now we can get rid of the parentheses. And we have 3x plus 2. And then we have the negative 2. And that's all over 3. So we can see here the, neg the 2 and negative 2 cancel. That leaves us with... 3x in the top and 3 in the bottom. We can see the 3's cancel and what we're we left with? J 
just x. Perfect. That's what we wanted, right? So we've just shown that f and g are inverses of each other because f of g and g of f came out to be both just x. So that's it. If you guys have questions, let me know. Hope you enjoyed it.